This podcast is brought to you by American Civil War and UK History. This is for the Passion of History podcast. This presentation is available as a video on our YouTube channel or as a podcast from wherever you get your podcasts from. And if you're watching on YouTube, remember to hit that subscribe button. And for blog posts, updates and links to all of our content, including all of our social media pages, please head over to our website. The link can be found in the podcast description. Hello, I'm your host, Daz. And on this episode of For the Passion of History podcast, I'm joined by historian and founder of History with Jackson, Jackson Van Uden. Hello, everyone, and welcome, and welcome to Jackson. Welcome, Jackson. Hi, how are you doing? Could you please start with telling us how you first became interested in history, please? Yeah, of course. So it's a it's a kind of a long story, um, but I'll, I'll try and make it as short and concise as possible. So as here long in the as U- yes. ever. <laughs> so here in the UK, we have a book sort of series called Horrible Histories. And, and from what I can remember when I was younger, this is one of the earliest memories I have in terms of history. My parents used to refuse to let me get toys in, in gift shops, uh, any ho- historical place we went to. And I think I remember going to the Tower of London and I got a Horrible Histories England um, book. So they used to do Wales, Scotland and England. I had the England one. Uh, and that's my earliest um, memory of wanting to get involved in history, learning about history. I think I was about five. And then my best friend, who now works with History of Jackson, me and her used to have competitions in the classroom, break time and lunch, um, seeing who can list as many kings and queens as possible. So I'd always had that interest in history. And then when I reached uh, the age of doing my A-levels, when I was 16, 17, I kind of, I'd kind of fallen out of love with history. I'd done the medicine through time module for our GCSEs, which, you know, no offense to anyone who does that module. I think it is the most boring history module that I've ever done. It was so dull, loads of dates, loads of names, which I don't do very well with. I don't do very well with dates at all. Um, I, to this day, I still forget people's birthdays and I'm a fully fledged adult apparently. Uh, and, um, Going from there, I didn't do history. I fell out of love of history. Um, and I broke my collarbone playing rugby. And I had I, I chose to redo year 12 because I was sunked out in coding for a year. And I chose to do history two weeks. After two weeks of doing business lessons and falling asleep in a business class, I thought, this is not for me. And I swapped to doing history. And then I was doing Russian Revolution, Wars of the Roses, the American Reconstruction period. And I just fell back in love with history. And, and, and from there... I went off and did a history degree. Oh, I've written history books. Like it's yeah, from being in love with history, so utterly enthralled by it, to falling out of love of it, and now actually being a historian. It's been kind of a, a long, winding journey. Awesome, great story. Yeah, everyone's got a great story behind why they love history. But um, what is your favourite period of history? So, I think I, ha- I have two different periods really for different reasons so i am a political historian but like a political theory historian it's a i'm in a weird mix on that one one of the weird ones um so the 1930s to 1950s from a political theory standpoint because i love totalitarianism um is a really interesting period for me to look at the theory that i'm interested in but look at it being applied through two historical regimes, Nazi Germany, Stalinist Russia, and to an extent later on, Maoist China. So that is the first period that I'm interested in, just from a political theory standpoint. The second period is the Wars of the Roses. So the 1450s to 1480s is my my second love. Um, and and learning about the, the political relationships in that point, why they were fighting learning about the different battles, I, I can't get enough of that period. So they're my two favourite periods. Okay, so um, where do you actually uh, reside as it live? Have you got plenty of that sort of stuff in your area? or? Um, so I live in the East Midlands, um, in Peterborough. So there's not that much history. I do live in, a, in an older house, so I have got a thatched roof. Uh, I will never do that again. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm not surrounded by too much history, but I've I've grown up in the shadow of Peterborough Cathedral, as some people might have seen on my social media. So 
I often go to other cathedrals. And, you know, meh, like it's 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 all right, but it's not quite Peterborough, and that is the only time I say that. Awesome, excellent. Okay, so you started um, history with Jackson. Um, so, what was the idea behind that, and and just tell us the history behind that in a way, if you if you would. Yeah, of course. So I went to Chichester and I did my BA history degree in Chichester, which is a lovely small town in the south of England. There's Roman history there. There's the Solent's only half an hour away. Like there's it's 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 covered by history. And at the second year, second year, and there was COVID going on as well. I was in kind of this two minds. What do I want to do next? Uh, I want to stay involved in academia. I'm not sure about doing a master's. I don't really want to teach. Um, and I was having all these different just different ideas. So my parents bought me a camera, a recording camera for, for Christmas. And they just said, go and do it. So I filmed the first video, uh, incredibly nervous. Uh, we're about three, four years old now. Um, so I did the first video and that's where it started from. Just wanting to go off and, and talk about what I love without boring my family members, but also being able to stay in touch with a world that I enjoy being part of. And then from it being learning history with me, you know, from me, it develops to learning history alongside me, learning history with me. So I started the podcast in April of my third year at uni, and I was speaking to historical experts about their specialisms and their books. And then it grew from there really and from just you know me learning about history or teaching history through that to me creating a history platform for historians to present their history and, and share their history with a wider audience excellent yeah and you're involved in quite a few history festivals because obviously i've seen some of those uh uh, the most recent one was um, Catherine of Aragon, wasn't it? But you're involved in other history festivals. So just tell us a little bit about those and, and uh, you know, what your plans are for the next year or so. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of these history festivals, they need, like, they love having history or content creators there to, to cover the festivals, uh, to interview their historians, to help get the message of these festivals across. And one such event that I've, as I've said, I've, I've grown up in the shadow of Peterborough Cathedral and I've always wanted to give back to my hometown uh, and to, to share the history that we have here. So I worked with uh, Peterborough Museum, Peterborough Cathedral to be the first ever podcast partner of the Catherine of Aragon Festival. So I uh, interviewed the historians who were speaking at that festival. I spoke to the the living historians of the, who were there spoke to dignitaries who were there and we gave a full comprehensive podcast coverage show just through interviews with people talking to about talking to them about why they liked Catherine of Aragon, why Catherine of Aragon is important. Sorry, Catherine of Aragon, I've said her name an awful lot this year, uh, mm -hmm. is an important figure in history. Uh, and then we do the same for Gloucester. So we head off to Gloucester History Festival and we speak to their, their speakers and, and help promote that festival in a different way. And, and to different audiences. And then later this year as well, we will be at Chalk History Festival, which is the highlight, the historical highlight of my year, because it is just an amazing festival. There's so many speakers, there's so many different topics, and you can't possibly get it get around it all in one day. It's just it's just a lovely place to be and and, and learn about history, but also share history with people who might not be able to get there. Yeah, so um, I'm I'm looking at it from a reenactor's point of view. I've not been to a history festival myself, um, and I'm kicking myself really. I should really sort of make the effort to go to one of these. I think, uh, but because I'm always reenacting, I don't really get the time, you know. Um, but yeah, um, that sounds excellent. But um, I understand you're also currently writing a book. So would you like to tell us a little bit about how far you are into that and and what it's about? Well, I, I should be further than I am already, uh, but I'm about uh, a fifth, about a quarter of the way through it. You're so, a busy guy, so we'll let you off. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, well, tell me that to my editor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, it's called Hitler versus Stalin, a comparative uh, study in political terror. So as you can tell, that I have quite a morbid fascination with, with history. Uh, I love learning about dictators and 
their actions. And this book is is very much about looking at the political terror of Stalin and Hitler. You know, what atrocities did they commit? Why did they commit these atrocities? And importantly, who was committing them and who were the victims? Uh, I think, I know that's it's an important area of study, but also to look at Stalin, of course, I'm going to say it's an important area of study. I'm writing the bloody book. Um, but Hitler and Stalin, it's um, they're often compared without much nuance, uh, which is what I'm wanting to do, kind of put the nuance in the conversation and say, look, this is how they did it, but this is how they're different. This is how their political terror differ, uh, is different in its execution and different in its methods. But also within the book, I talk about the history of political terror. Where does political terror come from? And how does it evolve until we hit that point in the French Revolution, which everything changes in the world based on the French Revolution? So it's a, it's, it's a work in progress, but it should be with my editor by January 2025. Awesome. Yeah, and I mean, they're two people that I find fascinating myself, you know. Um, yeah, great. Um, so anything uh, that you would like to talk about that I might have forgotten to ask you about and uh, what's the plans also for the next year or so for history with Jackson? I think the plan with History of Jackson is to to carry on as we're going. You know, we've had a lot of growth in the past month and a half. And and to try and turn this into a job as as we're all doing, as you're trying to do as well. Um, because you know, I love being involved in history. I love talking about history. I love talking to other historical content creators and historians such as yourself and sharing history with people. I think history is one of the most important things for us to talk about as a human race and often when you're in school and you're doing history you don't enjoy it because it's it's very formulaic and i am a history teacher as well uh, but it's very formulaic and you have to do it for assessments so when you leave school i think that's the time to hit people and time to say look there's more to, to this than the history of medicine or there's more to this than weimar germany so i think the plan is to keep going try and turn this into a full-time full-time job but also try and inspire more people and get more people interested in history and, and learning about history. Yeah, I, I agree. And I and I think uh, there are a lot more younger people interested in history than uh, they're given credit for, personally. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, so ever since I've you know been working in schools and inevitably kids find me on TikTok, um, ah. more kids than I've known who didn't enjoy history have actually been coming to, my, coming to me and go, I didn't know that about that era of history. And and the other day, the other day, I'm sure you saw it. The I shared a video about how they they um, worked, helped people with STDs in the Tudor and medieval period. Mm -hmm. And there was this massive shringe on this in this TikTok video. And I got a lot of questions at work about that. Uh, and at the moment, I'm teaching English, so I had to be like, "Well, this isn't relevant to what we're doing right now. We're we're talking about Frankenstein." So that's, uh, but it's it's good to see young people getting involved and and wanting to be interested in history. Yeah. So so you said you teach teaching English, but is history what you would prefer to teach, or would you just like to keep it like this as you are, you know, um, with the blog and and the podcast and things like that? Well, I'm a I'm a cover teacher at the moment, so I I am a cover teacher to to try and give me the space to succeed in history, of Jackson. You know, I'm. Uh, and succeed, succeed as a historian as well. Um, I'm I'm young enough to give it a run, so I might as well give it a go. Otherwise, you know, what am I playing at? So I'm I'm also a sport. I've I've played sports all my life, so that that competitive element that I've had from sports and playing rugby um, kind of seeps through into everything I do. Um, I I love to win. And I love to to try and be the best. So if I can't, if I don't give myself a run at trying to to be the best, then I, 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 I would, I would probably not be very happy with myself. Yeah, I get you. And uh, so, as far as history with Jackson is concerned, um, if people want to get involved with what you're doing, as far as writing blog posts or. Uh, even coming on your podcast how would they uh, reach you and how would they do that so if you head to www.historyjackson.co.uk there is a write for us tab at the top of it i think it's forward slash write dash four dash us 
uh, but it's probably easier just to go to the website and look at right for us. There is a contact form which you can put your blog post proposal in. You can talk to me about the post uh, and what you want to write. Me and my uh, me and my editorial team will then uh, overlook that and will uh, accept or ask you to make some uh, amendments to your post. Uh, in terms of the podcast we have got a little contact form at the bottom of the podcast page on the website we are currently fully booked up until july so if you have got a proposal we're very happy to look at it uh offer alternative coverage that we can do until that point in july um it's been a very hectic beginning of the year because we tend to we've got a load of bookings from publishers recently which has been absolutely awesome but we're always happy to see what we can do with authors and publishers to see how we can fit people in uh, if there's any last minute cancellations and also other ways in which we can help you promote your work yeah excellent and the link will be in the description everyone well jackson it was great having a chat with you and finding out about history with jackson so all that all that is left to say is thank you very much uh, no worries at all thank you very much for inviting me on I've, i'm absolutely honored to, to come on the podcast and i really enjoy your work so thank you Thanks for tuning in for this latest episode of For the Passion of History podcast, which was brought to you by American Civil War and UK History. And a big thank you to Jackson. You will find a website link for History with Jackson in the show's description. You can also find History with Jackson on Facebook, Instagram, X and TikTok. And for blog posts, updates and links to all of American Civil War and UK history's content, including all of our social media pages, please head over to our website. The link can be found in the podcast description. Cheers.